Currently, Uber is a $58 billion company, whereas Tesla has a market cap of around $43 billion. But this makes Uber about 50% more valuable than Tesla, or $20 billion more dollars in value. Yet Tesla has announced plans for an automated ride-sharing network, which could spell doom for Uber. So does it still make sense for Uber to be larger than Tesla? It seems that the market is viewing Tesla like a slow-moving car company, whereas they're viewing Uber as a technology company, but it's increasingly becoming clear that it may be the other way around. So let's first define what it means to be a tech company. According to Investopedia, the technology sector is the category of stocks relating to research, development, and or distribution of technologically based goods and services. I find it pretty interesting that Tesla is pushing the envelope in the automotive space with new patents, new ways of manufacturing, and a whole new paradigm for electric vehicles. And they're adding new software such as dog mode, sentry mode, and car karaoke, and they're moving at breakneck speeds. Uber, on the other hand, seems to be moving horizontally. They're just taking the existing features that they already have in ride sharing or in Uber freight or in food, and they're trying to expand and acquire companies in other areas of the world to get more people on its so-called network. However, it seems like Tesla has its eyes set on overtaking Uber in its own business of ride sharing, where it be for regular customers or even for freight with the Tesla Semi. Tesla has already released plans to develop self-driving hardware and even showed off its software months ago, yet Uber's self-driving car program seems to be behind Tesla's. Now I know we're talking Elon time here, but Elon Musk estimates 1.5 to 2 years for his robo-taxi network from Tesla, and Tesla's current vehicles are already driving themselves on highways and in other areas using production software. On the other hand, Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi Actually, he didn't even have a definite answer when asked in an interview when autonomous driving vehicles would be available. Regardless of whoever you agree with, I think that the company that is setting the bar high and is doing their best to hit that goal is the company that I want to be invested in versus a company that doesn't really seem to even have much of a plan. So where is Uber's self-driving roadmap? Where is their presentation? Also, where is their custom AI chip and where are their vehicles? There's nowhere that they're getting their data from in order to train their neural networks. They have no control over the cars in the Uber network because they don't own them. And I believe they are testing on a small subset of cars which are fitted with LiDAR and are using highly accurate maps which work really great until something in the, in the environment changes. Now there was an interesting scenario relating to a question at the Tesla Autonomy Day where one analyst was a little bit confused and asked why doesn't a company such as Uber just buy a bunch of self-driving Teslas, once of course Tesla has self-driving capability, and operate their own network. And this is actually something that the old CEO and founder of Uber, Travis Kalanick, once said, and he has a quote where he said that if Tesla had self-driving cars, he would order 500,000 of them right away. And I think this would be a very interesting partnership between Tesla and Uber, and Elon Musk says, sure, go ahead and do that but you would need to operate on the Tesla network. So Tesla would still be in control of the vehicles and software, but Tesla would be raking it in, in this case, because they're gonna be taking a cut out of every ride, while Uber would still pay all of the costs of running and maintaining the vehicles. So I think that Tesla's prospects, and we've only glanced at the self-driving aspect alone, but that's the one aspect that can be very bright for both companies, but could lead to Tesla having a higher growth rate and the upper hand in Uber's main market. And again, this is only self-driving we're talking about. I haven't even mentioned Tesla's other businesses to fall back on, such as cars, SUVs, trucks, energy, and batteries. So keeping in mind that Uber is currently valued at around 50% higher than Tesla, let's have a look at Tesla's revenue versus Uber over the last five years, including the most recent full year. Tesla currently earns more revenue than Uber and is poised to grow faster than the company. If you look at 2018, Tesla seems to be accelerating in growth while Uber is leveling off. Now also keep in mind that Tesla's current revenue is from cars mainly, while Uber's revenue comes from its service in a very large market that Uber currently dominates. So let's look at some other metrics including the earnings estimates and margins to see why investors may be paying more for Uber's stock. But before we do that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate your support in helping us grow our channel. You can also support us on Patreon and have a look at our Twitter page at the market is open. And also check out our t-shirts and other videos in the description below. Okay, turning to Uber's and Tesla's earning estimates for this year and the next, both companies are red when it comes to earnings. Uber's estimates call for a loss of $1 to $5 per share this year and a $2 loss next year. Tesla has also been in the red 
and analysts expect 2019 to be negative for the company. However, the Tesla analysts have a large amount of uncertainty, but at the same time, it also has more upside potential. If things go well for Tesla, some analysts are saying that there could be some really positive earnings in 2020. Uber has a much tighter range in terms of their estimates, but analysts are more confident that the earnings are going to be negative for quite some time. So to me, this actually doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of the valuation, because if you had to choose between one of these future earnings expectations uh, predictions to bet on, I mean, if everything goes great for Uber, they still lose money. Tesla has limited downside compared to Uber, but the potential to do quite well. And this is, of course, earnings that we're looking at, which is the bottom line, one of the most important metrics for stocks alongside revenue, which is important for looking at company valuations. But although we saw that Tesla's revenue is higher and their expected earnings might be higher, we missed some stuff in between. One thing that analysts and investors look at is what percentage of that revenue translates into gross profit. Or in other words, what's the gross margin? So this is super important. This is one of the main reasons why I think Uber trades at a premium to Tesla. Their margin is double. So for the same amount of revenue, Uber makes twice as much money. Since Tesla's revenue is currently double Uber's, they both make around $4 billion in gross profit. And every new dollar that Uber makes gets translated into profit twice as much as Tesla. But this is because Tesla is selling cars which have a high raw cost and a physical presence, whereas Uber is selling a service. Now still, if Tesla's revenue is double Uber's, then even with less gross margin, there becomes a point where they're still going to make more money. And so the growth rate of each company becomes the deciding factor. Also, this is just a snapshot of the present day. What happens if Tesla decides to focus more on Uber's services type business and moves into their market? The gross margin could change quite drastically. And I think this is something that analysts have not taken into consideration at all with Tesla's and Uber's current valuation. So let's have a look at the future prospects or business viability using Porter's Five Forces, which is a tool for analyzing the competitive landscape. We're going to apply it to Uber's core business of ride sharing because Uber's entire business relies on this service. Tesla is not yet in this business, of course. And the ride sharing service business is clearly a great business to be in with high margins, yet Tesla has set its sights on Uber. And so let's use this model to help see if Uber can maintain its lead in the business for a long term or if another player might be able to join in. So the first thing to look at is the power of suppliers. Uber doesn't really have traditional suppliers, so we're going to say that the drivers can be seen as suppliers. Drivers have very little pricing power as Uber is setting the price for everyone. They also have plenty of people to choose from. Basically, anyone with a car is a potential driver, so it's relatively easy for Uber to get drivers. That said, drivers are pretty expensive, as, as we'll see later on, but the drivers also don't really have anywhere else to go. They might drive for taxi companies or Lyft or other competitors, but Uber definitely has the dominant position at the moment. In terms of other suppliers, such as app stores, for example, uh, it's basically free for Uber to put an app on the iPhone or Android app store, so that wouldn't really impact Uber's profit at all. So overall, the threat of suppliers is pretty low, mainly because Uber's business doesn't really have that many traditional suppliers. Uber has full control and the drivers or app platforms really have no real way to drive prices up for Uber. That said, if another service was paying drivers more, they would happily switch. But for now, I think that there are so many drivers that this isn't really a threat. The buyers are generally people without cars or people that just need to get from point A to point B at any time. And so these are the buyers or consumers of Uber. There's a huge market of buyers, pretty much anyone who needs a ride somewhere. So would it be easy to get buyers to switch away? I think it would be if the price was a lot lower. But since Uber is the dominant player, their prices are pretty competitive, especially with other traditional methods of transport, such as owning your own car or even the taxi network. Now, Uber does need to balance out what they pay drivers versus what they offer customers. However, they do set the prices and the fact that they have so many customers and scale makes it much easier for Uber. So the power of buyers is quite low, mainly because there's so many of them with nowhere else to really go to get a better price and Uber's reach is so large that it has scale. Now, in terms of other competitors, Uber is the number one player here. They did popularize the category. In markets where there are a lot of competition, buyers and suppliers can easily go elsewhere, but I think that there are limited places to go throughout the current landscape. Uber and Lyft control the majority of the US market and other countries as well. So with Uber being much greater than Lyft, they do have an advantage. The third place player only has less than 3% of the market. Now the threat of substitution has to do with a competitor finding a different way to achieve the same thing that you're doing but using a different technology or something that can disrupt the industry. 
This is one area that I think could be a bit worrisome for Uber, though Uber is working on it, but we all know that self-driving cars would be highly disruptive to Uber's business. And today it isn't really science fiction anymore. Every major automaker is working on it and Uber is too. The main reason why it's such a threat is because it reduces the cost so drastically and eliminates the driver, which is the most expensive part of operating a self-driving network. If you take out the driver, then you can pass on the savings to the customer and lower the price, and at the same time, you could also be more profitable. So a substitute that is cheap will threaten Uber's profitability, and customers will gravitate towards the cheapest option. So can Uber defend itself against this new technology? So achieving self-driving themselves would obviously help since they already have the Uber network and economies of scale in terms of connections to their customers. However, they don't actually have the physical vehicles that might be required even if they have the self-driving software, although they could always buy self-driving vehicles. That said, if any one of the automakers or big tech companies gets there first, it could be devastating for Uber, so the threat is pretty high if self-driving rolls around. And one last point is that I don't think that Uber's network is all that strong, especially when faced with a significantly lower cost option. People will switch to something else with lower costs. It isn't like Facebook's network where there are surprisingly high switching costs, you stand to lose your friends, your photos, your communication with people. Uber currently has a good balance of drivers and customers using the platform and that is hard to replicate but people are only on the Uber network to save money with transport and so a cheaper alternative can disrupt them. Especially since under a self-driving car scenario it's much easier to balance the driver side of the equation. In terms of new entrants, so far Uber has been pretty unaffected by new competitors entering the market. It does still have a network of drivers and customers, a popular brand name, and it does prevent people from entering and being successful. They pretty much have an oligopoly with Lyft in the United States and in other countries they have been buying up other players to become number one in multiple markets. Now although it's easy and cheap to make a similar app and Uber doesn't really have any technology protection or anything like that. The problem for a competitor is that it's hard to get a foothold into the industry. It's going to be difficult to get drivers and customers to use your service, especially if they're already happy using Uber and you're not offering anything different. So in total, I think that Uber can do a pretty good job defending their market leadership position as long as nobody comes out with a meaningfully cheaper method of transporting people. Now, given that Tesla is on top of this, along with many other players, Uber's long-term future is uncertain in my opinion. One thing to point out is that there's a lot of money left on the table with the current business model that Uber has. Uber still needs to pay its drivers, as I've talked about. Actually, if Uber didn't have to pay drivers, obviously they would make a lot more money. Uber had $50 billion in gross bookings in 2018 alone. So about 80% of that went to the drivers. And of course the drivers do need it because they're the one paying all of the costs for the vehicle, maintaining it, fueling it, insuring it, etc. So Tesla plans to capitalize on this differential of gross bookings and revenue using their own business model. A self-driving car would reduce gross bookings but increase revenue by managing their own fleet or instead of drivers, you would have owners who maintain the vehicles but don't need to drive them. But basically, Tesla's plan is to eat into Uber's business and take a 30% cut while trying to expand their market. Also, in order to get people to switch over to the Tesla network, especially on the driver's side, it would be pretty simple because anyone who owned a Tesla would automatically have the ability to enter Tesla's network. Tesla would only need to focus on the customer side and get people to purchase rides. So it's pretty clear that a company or a Tesla with a self-driving vehicle would hurt Uber. But how close are they to self-driving cars? So currently Tesla's solution is arguably almost as good as humans for things like highways even better in some cases, as it pays attention all the time with sensors, staying within lanes when a human has an issue, it can avoid objects such as other things and other cars by monitoring surroundings multiple times per second and has faster reaction time than a human. Although it still isn't as good as a human in many areas, obviously there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. All that said, Tesla does have the most data and it is the only company that's the most public or the most visible. You can buy a Tesla tomorrow and check out all the features, whereas no competitor really has that. The self-driving strategy of many competitors doesn't really exist. So although you can argue that the feature currently sucks, the feature of self-driving, I do want to draw your attention briefly to illustrate the power of machine learning that Tesla has harnessed. So if you look at AlphaGo, it took years to get AlphaGo to play this game Go. Many said it would take years and years and it would never happen. But finally, in March 2016, AlphaGo beat Lee Sedol four out of five games. And that was unheard of. It took years to get there. It learned by processing millions and millions of games played by humans. 
Okay, and then Google developed something called AlphaZero, which within 40 days of computer processing, it was the best player in the world and wiped the floor with AlphaGo. So I don't think the parameters are the same for self-driving and the simulations for driving aren't uh, that simple or contained in a game such as Go. However, the exponential growth is what's important here. Even though Tesla's system looks like it sucks and there's a group of people that point out obvious flaws, there's an exponential improvement in its speed. And that said, Tesla cars already seem to be able to drive themselves in many areas, whereas other companies are still deciding whether or not they should be using LiDAR. So I think self-driving might be a little bit closer than you think. So in summary, although Tesla currently makes about double the revenue that Uber makes, Uber does have gross margins which are twice as high. Therefore, I think the current valuation of both Uber and Tesla is heavily reliant on the future growth of each company, as is true with many other tech companies. However, I think that Uber's future is uncertain due to the advent of self-driving vehicles, a segment where Tesla is the disruptor. Uber has all of its eggs in one business of logistics and transportation, whereas Tesla seems to be one of the fastest and most innovative companies coming right for Uber's market, yet they have a growing electric vehicle production to fall back on, along with a host of other large businesses. Now, one last analogy to leave you with is something that Peter Thiel talks about in his book, Zero to One, which is that you should always look to invest in companies that are basically monopolies. But he does say that this may be difficult to find because the monopolistic companies tend to pretend to be very competitive. Now take a look at Google, for example, which he says has a 66% market share in search and is essentially a monopoly in their core cash cow business. However, they will always tell you that they see competition everywhere they look from every angle, be it from phones against Android or other browsers against Chrome. At the same time, a restaurant business, which is super competitive in a super competitive space, will tell you that they are very unique. They're the only Nepalese fusion food restaurant in Chicago or whatever example he uses. So my view is that everyone thinks that Uber is a monopoly. They clearly have a dominant share in the United States and they are expanding all over the world to provide their service. Yet I would argue that you are being lied to. Uber actually has more competition than it seems and they can be easily disrupted although it won't be obvious until it happens. On the other hand, my opinion is that Tesla is in a super competitive market. Everywhere they look, there is competition. Competition from high-end cars, ICE cars, new electric cars, competition for their unreleased pickup truck or semi. Even competition for batteries and solar. I mean, look at all the companies getting into self-driving, trying to beat Tesla to the punch. Competition is everywhere for Tesla. However, if we look at it through this lens, I think you're actually being lied to. Tesla is actually a monopoly a monopoly that we haven't really seen many of. It's a monopoly that keeps disrupting itself and getting stronger every time. They are so far ahead of their competitors in electric vehicles and their cars are tens of thousands of dollars cheaper for similar cars with the same specs. Take a look at the Porsche Taycan, for example. Tesla's car outperforms it in every way and is half the price. Tesla software is completely new for a vehicle and is providing value for consumers. You can find it anywhere else. Nobody else building electric cars has even done anything innovative with them yet. Tesla has the whole greenfield market to themselves. And lastly, Tesla already has many self-driving features in production being used by everyday consumers. They have pretty much all of the industry's real data from their own vehicles, which are built with all of the sensors required. Therefore, I would argue that Tesla is actually the monopoly and Uber is the commodity. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate your support in helping us grow our channel. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and even Google+. And don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching.